My name is Claire Williamson, aka The Millionaire Showerman. I am the author of Awaken Your Miracle Frequency. It is easier than you think to have it all. I had this crazy idea of profiling the journeys of three of my clients who are also publishing their books as part of my program, The Unleashed Awakened Wealth Mastermind. When I published my book, I went through what I can only describe as a ritual of initiation to playing bigger in this way, and I realized something powerful. This is the ritual of initiation to a tidal wave of sales and opportunities. You have to step into a fire that changes every level of your being and burns your old patterns, default expectations, and all of your programmed judgments and assumptions to the ground, just like a baptism of fire. Hi there, my name's Vicky and I've been working with Claire inside her amazing accelerator program. Hey you guys, it's Carmen here. I am a quantum birth doula. Hi, I'm Judith. I'm a transformation coach and a business mentor from Germany, supporting visionary female entrepreneurs, those star seeds, white leaders globally. Writing and publishing your story takes your evolution to the next level. Just like me, they were looking for more reach unapologetic voice, authentic authority, and radical expression, as well as the certainty that the next thing that they invested their time into doing would actually make money. They were ready to get off the hamster wheel of constant launches, constant offers, being married to social media. I had already helped them get clear on their message, get clear on their mission, and up-level their brand expression and authority. And it was time for them to take the next step, to publish their soul story and get it into the hands of the people that need their service. I created this documentary, A Baptism of Fire, to show you what it really takes to create the tidal wave of sales, money, and opportunities that you are truly craving as a visionary coach, light leader, and star seed. I wanted to share a little bit about why I decided to um, write this chapter of this book. Um, funny story. So I would say it's probably started off maybe about a year ago and whenever I you know experience or discover something new within my line of work I'm quite open to sharing my lessons in um, on social media and there's been a few occasions where people have actually turned around to me and said have you ever thought of writing a book and my initial thought process was oh my god never <laughs> never ever ever no, that's not something I would do. But then it wasn't just one person. Another person came along and she asked the same thing. Have you thought about writing something like a book or, you know, whatever, a workbook or something like that? And again, my thought process was no way, no way, no, this, this can't be. Um, anyways, I attended a um, past live um, sort of session with a 
with an intuitive um, coach that delves into past lives. And when I had the consultation with her, we uncovered something from my past that in my past I was doing some very similar work to what I'm doing now all focused around women, all focused around birth, all focused about helping women find their purpose and helping them achieve the best life possible. And during this um, consultation, the woman that was doing the, the, the session with me asked, um, have you ever thought about writing a book? And I was like, okay, seriously, this is just nuts now because you're like the third or fourth person that said this to me. And she said, it's really like, I can imagine that I am because in your past life, the teachings that you were bringing were very similar to what you're bringing now, except on a different level. And at the time you wrote a ledger with all of the findings of what you discovered in that life. And that's why I say anything that you have now, it's really important that you leave your mark with what the teachings are that you've unveiled and that you've discovered along the way. And this just blew my mind. And then the strangest thing was then my coach asking me, you know, Carmen, there's this opportunity to write a book chapter. Are you, are you in? And I was like, okay, wait, this is just absolutely nuts because this happened literally on the same day as that consultation. And yeah, I was blown away and I was like, okay, right, this is my chance to put my big girl pants on and just kind of go for it. And that's what I did. I've started writing my chapter already, first 400 words. <laughs> <laughs> it's a start. <laughs> okay, I want to take you back to the beginning, a time where life was simple, where I believed that there was always something within me that felt different to every other person that I knew, but that I always shut down because of fear. It was a time where being perfect wasn't enough, and holding myself back from the experiential journey of life meant keeping myself small. I never felt as my true authentic self. I felt as though I always had to be a certain person to please others. You know, that good little girl, the one that listens the fuck up and does as she's told. The one whose opinion or voice never counted or meant anything. The one that was consistently shut down from any ideas that would come through. Yes, that very one. I'm sharing this deeply because I want you to know how much this impacted not only my life, but also my first pregnancy and birth, which was an absolute shit show. I was brought up in South Africa by very strict Portuguese parents with a very firm belief that working hard was what was what was what called in financial stability, that wealth wasn't on the cards for us, that life was dangerous, children needed to be seen and not heard, and that not doing as you were told would bring in some serious consequences. I'm talking wooden spoon consequences. Even the school I attended added fuel to the programming that I already had. It's your typical entry point onto the conveyor belt system of be a certain way, birth a certain way, and live a certain way. Society considers this the average norm, and even with all the layers of conditioning, I kept feeling that there had to be something more to life. But of course, fear and the need to belong kept me chained to settling and being content with what... Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, with what I had, I, I blown away. Love it, absolutely. You're <laughs> wonderful writer. Oh my goodness, I feel like oh, I'm listening you. to a story, and that's the main yeah. thing, right? It's a story. You're telling the story of your life, and it's a lot of people's yeah. lives. Mm -hmm. For me, it was the typical thing was I wanted to finish school, and my idea was wanting to become an actress. I wanted to go to Hollywood. And I was all the way in South Africa and my parents shut that down straight away. No, you're not going. You need to do a beauty therapy course. <laughs> so I went into a profession that I didn't even want to do. But because of the conditioning, it was like, okay. So I've been doing beauty therapy for the however many years until it reached a point where I was like, no, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> this isn't what I'm meant to do. I'm joining this beautiful book project because I do believe that your business is an expression of your soul's purpose. 
And if we look at this new earth age that we're all entering and the way business is done is shifting, the way marketing is done is shifting, the way that we get to be who we are and express ourselves is shifting, this message and how to do this needs to get out to more people. And that is exactly what I feel this book can absolutely support my mission with. Together with these amazing other leading ladies and all together there's just a whole movement in the transformation of this world and this new earth age. Okay, how? Like, why? Again. And likewise, it's connected to the money thing. I still don't get it. I'm waiting for this, you know, like you guys share, like I see it everywhere, it's like, oh, I shifted this and all of a sudden people reached out. Fuck. Yeah, where are they? Oh, writing the chapter in the book. It's been such a ride to get to that to that final piece it was um it was massive actually like I wrote about the five facets of my self-worth diamond I wrote about the journey of choosing me and how I, I was this diamond in the rough I was this this girl who didn't used to choose herself who used to put everybody above her and and I knew I wanted to write about how I'd found my authentic voice and how I knew to choose me with my voice and choose me in love and all of the things that I'd kind of revealed before. And the other facets I wanted to talk about, I'd started but I'd not completed them. <laughs> but going through the book, I had to go there. And um, I really went there when it came to dealing with choosing me through my emotions and integrating my inner child. So work that I'd done before but not completed. And it was it was raw and necessary and beautiful. <laughs> and and I really connected again with that little girl inside that I that I really had abandoned. So I wasn't choosing all of me, all of the parts of me, all of the previous versions of me. And so that was a huge moment and such a necessary moment in order for me to write that, that chapter. And also in terms of accepting me through choosing me through my body and through my appearance, I had to get really visible. I went online without my usual mask, without my makeup, I went and did a live one morning in my pajamas without my makeup and that was so big for me at the time to do that and and I just felt so authentic and and I celebrated myself so much for that which may not seem like a big deal to other people but for me it was because I've worn my makeup of mask since I was 14 years old and I'm 50 in a few weeks time so it was really big and and also choosing me through through going through a purification because I'd done things in the past but what I realized is that I didn't choose the long-term version of me and so you know I went through a whole purification of choosing no more caffeine choosing not to eat the things that that make me feel tired and heavy and sluggish and not worrying so much even about what's been cut out but what what's been put in and really focusing on putting in the good things that are the, the things that serve me and and where I choose myself for the long term so that I feel good all of the time and then of course there's a facet of money which was massive and a facet of choosing me you know I I learned not to to shift that that value of what I'm worth according to outside perspectives and I, I learned to really hold that value so it was work again I, I'd been journeying on but it, it was again so complete 
through this process of writing the book. It's been epic, it's been a wild ride. I'm not saying that it's an easy journey, but it was, like I said before, necessary and beautiful and, and you know, <laughs> I think I'm not gonna be able to stop myself from wanting to embark on another project um, in the future because you know, it's it's a rite of passage writing a book or writing a chapter in a book. It's a rite of passage because you have to live that. You have to live those words, you know. And it, and it's been amazing. And I'm just so so grateful for the experience. So so grateful for cracking open, falling apart, and putting it all back together, and creating something that I'm really proud of. Um, for me and also so it could inspire other people to learn to look at their own self-worth diamond and where they're choosing themselves and where they're not choosing themselves and to be really conscious of that. It's just been really beautiful. As my journey and the journeys of my clients prove, it is not a comfortable journey. You truly meet yourself and meet your fears. And what I see in my, in my business in my community, in the people around me on social media is so many people backing away from the heat of their unlimited potential. They get out of their comfort zone and they feel out of their depth. They go back to their old patterns, their old ways, their old habits of self-sabotage and playing small so that they can stay safe. And it's easy to feel the heat and step back, right? Instead of towards. But when you say yes to publishing your book, when you commit to publishing your book, the only way is through the fire, a baptism to your next level. So, will the success and money that my clients are seeking be the payoff for the heat of the fire they decided to step into by saying yes to publish their books as part of my program? Will they experience the rewards of their truth that will rise from the ashes of their limits? I guess you have to watch and see. Welcome to my documentary, A Baptism of Fire.